I'm Sarah Houston Gonzalez, and I work at Duke Science and Society, and my research is in genetics policy as it applies to law enforcement and also medical testing um, and whole, whole genome exome testing. So at Duke, we have a program called the Task Force for Neonatal Genetics, and part of this program is we sequence the genomes of newborn babies or very young children that are born with an undiagnosed disorder. And by doing the whole genome, we're able to look at as much of the information as we can for the child. We diagnose um, or we seek to diagnose the, what is causing the rare disease that we're seeing in, in small children or newborn children. Um, and these children are usually um, have something wrong with them that seems to be genetic. And the way we, we dis decide whether it seems to be genetic is usually when it's in more than one system. So it's both in the brain and in the kidney, or a structural anomaly of the face and also in the brain. When we see these rare traits happening in a child, and the parents seem perfectly normal, um, it's clear to us that there's something genetic happening. Now, sometimes that is affecting behavior as well, and sometimes it is simply a structural change that doesn't change behavior at all and just causes problems in the physical um, formation of the baby. Maybe they, they have problems with their kidney or problems with their liver or problems just breathing properly. So the, re the reason we do this genome sequencing is to find the underlying cause of their disease, and it might help to treat the child, um, but in many cases it doesn't necessarily help to treat the child, rather it helps the parents to understand and put a name to what is happening to their child. Um, so there's a lot of personal utility rather than clinical utility in doing the genome sequencing and finding this underlying cause. When a parent then has a name for the, what is happening, it changes how they're able to interact and manage, just personally, how they're able to manage what is happening to their family. It's one of the worst news somebody could have is when they have a newborn child and the doctor says, there's something very wrong, it's probably genetic, and it isn't curable. This is devastating for a family. And when they then say, if you can say, okay, it's cystic fibrosis, then parents can say, okay, I can read about that, I can think about it, I can group with other parents, and I can start to manage this and process it. But when the doctor says, we don't know what it is, we've never seen this before, yours is the only one in the world like this, then it's a whole nother set of emotions that the parents have. I'm passionate about my work with the families with these rare diseases because they, they feel like islands to themselves. The, the parents, if, and it's tough on parents, it's really tough on marriages, it's tough on families. They have to rely on, on external support from grandparents, aunts, uncles, the, the village. And that's, it's hard. It's really, really hard for them. And when you tell them that it's rare and they're the only ones, they feel really alone. Um, so my role is to, to bring these families together. Uh, we host a family forum every year for all of our research subjects. So all the ch children and, and fam parents that are involved in the study are invited to come together and to have that. It's not a support group so much as just a community of we're all struggling with the same thing. We, each family doesn't know what is happening. Some of them will have answers, some of them won't. Some of them will have a, a name to the disease and some of them don't. Some of them have kidney defects, others have heart defects. So there are even different spectrums of, of phenotypes and, and um, traits. But by bringing them together, all of these, we call them ends of one, N equal one, bringing all these N of one families together makes them feel like they're part of a community and makes them feel less alone. And that's, that's why I do that. That's the most rewarding part of what I do, even if they don't have an answer, even if we can't find the answer. Because we look through the genome, we'll look for that 
change all of the genome, billions of bases, and we still can't find it. So maybe it isn't genetic. Maybe it's somewhere we didn't look. We don't know. But we can still at least engage with the family and let them um, have some community as they're struggling through this.